Future State Gotham issue two. Joshua Williamson writing with uh, uh, Giannis Milio Noyanis on the art. That was close. Milo Nyan- yeah, Milo Noyanis. That was, that, was, that was close enough. That was a ballpark. <laughs> right. Uh, Dennis Culver uh, in the writing team with, with Williamson as well. Oh, yeah. sorry. I missed the name. Uh, so we had the, the end of the last issue. Uh, so who was, who was missing for the last issue that one? That was me. You were missing. Yes. All right. So so me and Matt both agreed it was weird. This wasn't in color. And Connor disagrees with that. From my I, I think it's fine. I'm all for remember. it. I think it looks great. Um... I think they are solid. I do think there's times where it's harder to follow the flow of the action because when you get into more mm-hmm. actiony bits, it's harder to tell what's going on without the color. But uh, hey ho, regardless, uh, we start off with this uh, the cliffhanger from last time, which is the Red Hood with the the current Bat family uh, debating over whether or not the giant bat symbol explosion quake thing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, uh, was the new Batman, was was Jace. I mean, they don't call him that, obviously, they don't know who it is, but... Yeah, um, it's called the new Batman. And Dick and the, the rest of them are like, no, we'll handle this, it's, you know, it's Bat Family-esque stuff, we'll deal with it. Um, you know, we're not jumping to these conclusions. Um, and they have a bit of a fight, uh, as you'd expect. Um, you know, it's... It is this fun action stuff, you know, uh, Red Hood uses, like, some of the tech. He's got this big drone that he kind of jumps on at one point, because now he's, you know, he's, a, he's, he's... Peacekeeper Red. Peacekeeper that was the phrase I was on. I'm trying to remember what they call it, because it's not Magistrate. That's yeah. the name of the organization, but... Yeah, Peacekeeper Red. So he's, he's got all this new fancy tech now. Uh, and they're, they're, they're using that. Um, we got some fun action sequences. Um... But we get into some more sort of crazy stuff as it goes on um, with someone that we don't know yet who, you know, explodes one of the big drones um, and makes this big public statement uh, that it's this whole thing. And, and you know what, it does a decent job here of having this character stand out in the crowd. He almost looks like Green Arrow, actually, just because of the, the goatee and the... It, yeah, it really reminded me of Oliver Queen. Yeah. Just with an axe. Yeah. yeah. This is the this is from the multiverse, so, an axe wielding version of all. Being, being that it's Williamson and he just brought back Connor Hawk, is there a <laughs> chance? I mean, I not... mean, we get Connor Hawk versus Jason Todd in like can't roll out trying to save Gotham. It's not the realm, honestly. Where the art's at its best, and where you know the lack of color does not matter at all, it's when we start getting the running and silhouette, like into the alleyways and stuff like that. That's where it really like the black and white works wonderfully there. There's, there's, there's no denying that, uh, you know, that's where the simplicity mm-hmm. shines. And kind of as we kind of knew or expected, you know, Bruce is the one giving Jason orders, but he doesn't want the rest of the Bat family to know that he's alive yet, because uh, Bruce, you know, likes to play his long game and keeps his secrets and whatnot. Classic I, Bruce. I don't suspect they're going to be particularly happy about this <laughs> when they find out, but, you know. When are they ever? True. Uh it's doing a job though of making Jason feel important because Bruce is the one that he's you know he's trusting him to do this. Um, but I do like that now that we've established the rest of the Bat film in the book, we do actually cut to them on their own as well, where they're they're talking about what to do. Uh, you know, it's Dick and uh, Tim, I think. I, I feel like I really missed something by not reading the Tim Future State issues because, like, like properly because like Tim I... Tim's immortal now. No, I I feel yeah. like from the one issue I read, it's the Lazarus resin. So it's it's yes. something based off of the Lazarus pit goo, right? And now he regrows things, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I I just kind of went with the flow. I was like, okay, sure. You're telling you're telling me I, that he's immortal now. I, I did too, but I was like, what, what what's going on here with Tim? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is this is one of the, this is one of these moments as well where the simple art and the black and white like can hurt things. You know when the two characters pop in, it wasn't until the next panel that I was I even knew it was Stephanie because it's just like a you know it's so Again, low detail and you know some colors yeah. would have helped here. If I saw the purple, exactly. I'd have been like, ah, that'd have been Stephanie. Uh, yeah. And I have no <laughs> idea who is the other guy. I don't know from that panel. Nope. <laughs> that's, my, that's my main problem with this book is there's so much going on and. Because of the lo-fi style they're going for, 
you have to get a lot of context clues. I mean, I'm sure I said um, this when we were talking about the first issue. But I, I it, assumed it was Jefferson, because he was there with them earlier, right? It, it probably is. Yeah. But it's not made abundantly clear. This, well, is, what, this is what I was saying last time, is when you shoot a movie in black and white, you shoot it differently because you know it's in black and white. I don't necessarily feel like this, this book's been drawn with black and white in mind. Uh, I, I, has, I don't know. It was a mistake. I, I disagree with that. That was a mistake. Um, I think here you can tell it's Steph because you can see the uh, bloody eye patch at the of the long shot, and you can see the bat on the uh, on the chest. Can you see the eye patch? Yeah, when they're in the doorway, you can see it over her head. That's that's just a part of her hair. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to tell you it's there. It is just there there is an eye patch going across her uh, her face over her head, like it is in every other time oh, we see her, and then she's got a bat on her chest. Okay, you see eye patch. For the record here... It's a bandage. It's, yeah. yeah, it's more of just a, a strip of fabric, right? And it just blends in with the hair in that long shot. Fair enough. But the bat is on the chest, you can't argue with that. I mean, the bat's on the chest. Lots of characters have bats on the chest, though. <laughs> yeah, but given that there was only four of them on the fight earlier... <laughs> And there's four of them here now. It's probably reasonable to assume it's those four. There's just some shorthand. There was so many times where I had to think a bit more about what I was looking at just to make sure I knew what I was looking at. Uh, Fair enough. You know, there was, just, there was something I felt in the first issue. Uh, we do get, you know, Jace popping up, the new Batman, uh, later in the issue. Um, mm. And obviously him and Jason are thrown to the, the ruckus together. Um, and it says, hey, you know, that wasn't me. I'm Batman. I ain't going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Jason's off to visit Arkham Knight for reasons. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. Jason, you know, pulls that I was trained by the real Batman, uh, and I'm like, yeah, this sounds like snotty, Jason. Uh, the cliffhanger is though yeah. is while he's visiting uh, Arkham Knight, Astrid, which you know, obviously none of us really liked that arc. We all dropped out a detective when that stuff was going on. Yeah. Um. That's not like a thrilling plot development, but the cliffhanger of the issue is is that uh, all of the cells are opened up, so they're basically surrounded by bat villains at the end. So, so you know, mm-hmm. Jason, Jason are going to. That's really weird to say. Actually, that I've just said the two names back to back. Call, call him Tim. No, that's even no. more confusing. That's the other way around. Okay. And you think maybe that's why they started calling him with Jace? Because which, which one is it, is he wanting to go by Tim or is he wanting to go by Jace? No, Jace. He wants Jace. Jace. Tim, okay. Tim is the original name. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I, I've. Not been reading it, so I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's just weird though is to say it, the back to back like that, Jason, Jason, because they sound uh-huh. similar. Yeah. And they got what? Clayface, Two Face, Zaz, yeah. Croc. Now, and this is after everything. So these are all the. Oh, see, because we didn't read that Arkham Knight one either. We read that first story and we we're like, we're out. Oh, okay. Because so this... it was bad. I just I don't feel bad about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... But there was future state backups with Arkham Knights, yes, wasn't there? There was. Yeah. Yes. So was that before? Or after? I don't know. They're all locked. They're all locked up here in Blackgate. So I I assume after... it's before this. I assume. It, I assume. I assume they got captured after the story. Uh, okay. And that's where we are just well, now. I could now, be wrong. Now, but... now they're extra angry. Yes. Uh... I mean, maybe, maybe this will lead into what they were doing in their own backups. I don't know. I'm not going to think sure. about what they were doing before. I'm just going to take it in the context of what was in this this book. Uh, I definitely like this show one more. I think uh, mm-hmm. overall, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm 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 curious to see where it's going with the, with the various things. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I. I it's one, of the, it's one of these weird things where I, I don't, like, I, I think a lot of what it's doing is fine, and I'm into the characters mm-hmm. enough and wanting to see how, you know, future Dick and Steph and you know, even future Jason and how he handles this and whatever. But, I, you know, it, it, this issue didn't set my world on fire. I've said that, like, a bunch of times this episode. Sometimes, yeah. you, just, sometimes you just attach to a figure of speech it's, that it's, you use. It's one of those weeks. Yeah. You just you, you say a phrase for, like, a week and then you leave it behind again for a while. But... Um, but yeah, that was good as issue one. Not great, not bad. No, I, I, I told Connor yesterday when we were talking about hockey, I, I wasn't going to read this, and then I woke up extra early this morning, mm-hmm. and I just read it. <laughs> so I was wondering why you were, like, getting involved. I was like, it's, I yeah. It's one yeah. of those things but, where if more books yeah. keep getting added to the week it's coming out, that 
because um, it's a because it's a yeah. future state book because it's not the the present continuity it's, it's the easy drop less important. yeah it's the easy mm-hmm. drop because of that and if it was like knockout of the park amazing every issue then it wouldn't matter what what it is obviously right. but be, because it's kind of on this teetering level of ah it's all right yeah it's doing some interesting stuff but not amazing mm-hmm. it's, yeah so we'll see i think i think i enjoyed it more than, than you two did by the sounds of it well yeah anything you'd like to add then I, I i do not quite understand the the disliking it being in black and white i i, I really enjoy how this personally i just how distinct it looks from everything else mainly i want it to feel like blade runner and this does not feel like blade runner no. i'm okay with it not feeling like blade runner you know <laughs> the one know. thing of blade runner i like is the aesthetic and i don't even get that here you know you kind of get in that so. detective comic stuff so. Yeah. To be fair to Matt, though, a lot of what we got in Gotham and Future State was that aesthetic. Mm-hmm. You know, the, yeah. it was it was heavily there. It, it was. I, I'll give you that. But given that the uh, the stuff we had uh, before, it was, it was it was very like Akira influenced. What we had with with Jason in uh, is that anime? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very anime go. manga. Yeah. But there, there was a lot of that influence in the the Red Hood story already. That this just feels natural like yeah it doesn't feel out of place to me even like a book like this i, I kind of seen dc publishing like this weird black and white book just a couple of years ago and not like because obviously we've had like batman black and white i, I could have seen mm-hmm. that coming back a few years ago as like that anthology but this is just it's a regular book and we're just going to publish it like this mm-hmm. i i don't think they would have made that choice before uh, so I, i'm glad they are now whether, whether or not you like it or not it's kind of Irrelevant to, to this part of my, my point is that I, I just appreciate they're doing it. You know, they're, they're trying something different. Yeah, I just like it. I just think there'd have been better books to <laughs> make back black and white versus this one. But, you know, as well. What it is. Especially since we have all these back characters who are all color coded, typically. You know, Dex yeah, in the blue, yeah. Steps in the purple, Red Hood's obviously red. You know, Castle will have about yellow on her black. And then, you know, Jefferson's, they'll have his lightning and blue and whatnot. Yeah, like, there's, there's, there's a mostly different colors associated with each character. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, and there's a backup as well, actually. Uh, uh, just to rate the main story, though, Matt, what are you giving it? Um, I'll give this a seven. It's okay. Fine. I'll give it an eight. Oh, 6.5. Oh, 6.5. Yeah, perfectly fine, but... Uh, the backup, though, which I forgot this had backups, to the point where I almost just said I'm not going to read this, and then I saw the writer, it was John Ridley, and went, yeah. oh shit, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm reading that. That much, I will, and Olivier Coipel yes. art, I, that's what I was in for. I what? will say I enjoyed this one a lot more than the last backup. Yeah, and like, also I think this art more. lends itself to black and white a lot more. Yep. Uh, it's kind of a shame, because I love when Coipel the colors because the art's always so dynamic. However, this looks great. Like, the shading, yeah. the shadows, it, it, everything it, for the story, especially. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's quite important to the overall thing, because this introduces the idea that Jace's little sister is going to become, like, his Robin. She's not She's not using that name, and she's not going to no. wear that outfit by any means, but effectively... Uh, which, which sister is that? There's Tam. So you got Tim, Luke, Tam. That's another T. But that's the, that's the big thing here is, you know, he's in, he's in a, a tough predicament. He's getting beat up by thugs and she shows up to help. And we get some action sequences that look great uh, before they ride off on their bikes at the end. Um, and that's it. But it's, it's the, the, the purpose of it mainly is to introduce, like, hey, she's like his Robin. And that's going to be a thing uh, in the mm-hmm. future. And that's kind of neat. Uh, and they, they've already had a bit of a bond in the next Batman stuff. So this makes complete sense uh, that they're introducing the thing. Tiffany. Tiffany. There you go. I know it was a T name. Yeah, so that's neat. Actually, I I, I like the back top back up a little bit more than the main story just because it interests this cool new mm-hmm. dynamic and idea. Uh, yeah, and their relationship's been like, really sweet as well. So, I, I like that they're fighting the igloo boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and this show really has its pulse on. You know, they're basically a fascist group of racists that used to work for Penguin but now run their own thing. And once they find out that the Jace is, you know, this Batman is black, they really turn it up. And so Tiffany comes and, you know, helps him out and, you know, 
Jace beats the ever loving hell out of them, and she even points out like you, you laid a little extra in there. Do you think you the uh, the abandoned penguin because penguin supported the 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 penguin gay marriage from Parks and Rec? Remember that episode, Matt, where the two Most penguins? Most likely. Yeah. yeah. I just remember that. It, just I mean, made, that, it popped out of my head. It just popped out of my head there because you mentioned penguins. Mostly, what is, what is going on? To well, <laughs> mostly, <laughs> I mean, I'll say mostly that I don't remember what penguins up to during Future State, but they, it was made that they were former. So yeah. even like penguin had enough of their. And I, in my head, I like to think that Oswald's a a different class of criminal and doesn't put up with racist fascists in his ranks. Hmm. So no, I remember, yeah. I remember. Uh, yeah, that was neat. Uh, it feels weird to rate such a short story because some of these backups are yeah. really short. But uh, uh, I mean, Matt, you yeah, makes mm-hmm. So I'll ask Connor first. What are you rating the backup? Seven. It's it's good. It's not yeah. long enough to be anything more. Yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's fair. I'll, I'll yeah. go seven too. Uh, Matt. Well, I'll say seven point five. There you go. Just yeah. has to be a little more positive. Has to give it that yeah. Matt spin.